In this lesson, I'd like to show you the basics of blend shapes and how they're used in facial expressions. What we have in this file is our normal default face, a copy of the default, another face that has been modified into an angry pose, and one final head that incorporates bulging fat under the chin. This will become what's, what is known as a corrective blend shape. Let's start first by selecting all three of the heads and then we'll shift select on our default head, the one that will be used in the animation. And we'll create a blend shape and we'll turn on the blend menu. So what we now have is that. I'll disable modern shapes so that we can focus on the one final face that we'll be using. And on my sliders, if I go from 0 to 100, you'll notice that the skin tends to bulge. Working with the angry, we'll turn our face to the angry pose. And of course, working with the basic, blend shape. We won't do any because the vertices are in the same identical position. But the reason I wanted to show you this is to show you a sense is happening with blend shapes. Let me go ahead and turn the percent. By selecting some vertices, you'll the vertices on our default head react accordingly. Also the slider gives us a value of through one. You can get any of that chain simply through the slider. Essentially what is happening with the blend shape is it's a recording of vertices. The vertices placement in 3D space is being recorded from the blend shape onto the default head. So with that in mind, then go sculpt additional heads as long as you're not changing the vert count. So the vertices have to be the same number on the default as they are on the blend shape. Okay, so once again, I'm going to turn off my blends and show you how the angry pose looks. Now this angry pose happens to be a very big pose that we used for a simplistic character or project. You'll notice that everything is symmetrical from one side to the other. If you'd like to have a more advanced facial animation, you'll need to break all these components up into individual blend shapes. So for example, the eyebrow down and eyebrow up would need to be two separate blend shapes on the right side, two more for the left side. The upper eyelid, lower eyelid on both sides would also require a blend shape. Basically four blend shapes compared to just doing one blend shape that would have both eyes blinking at the same time. And, and so on. So the mouth However you'd like to alter this character, the more blend shapes you create, the more control you have over your final expressions later on. So moving back to the fat chin blend shape, what I'd like to do for you how we can drive this automatically through the rotation of joints. Within the head, I have joints set up that will be skinning to the action itself. All right, so I'll select my joints, I'll select, and I'll say skin, bind, skin, smooth bind. Now when we rotate, the head, you notice we have a back in the bottom. And you won't necessarily achieve the exact kind of distortion that you would have in real life. So to do that, we create a corrective blend shape that will allow us to correct that problem. I'll bring my joint rotation back to its zero default state and I'm going to now create a set driven key. Because we're working with the jaw joint on its rotate Z axis, I'll select on that and then right click and go to set driven key. This brings up set driven key panel that has four panel windows. 
it's important that you have all four attributes within these windows in order to activate the key stroke. Because this rotation of this joint is going to drive the blend shape of the chin fat, we'll select load driver. It puts our jaw joint into the driver section and we'll select on rotate Z which is the attribute that we're rotating on. I'll select my head and go to the blend shape and say load driven. And now within here I'll select which of the attributes of the blend shapes I'd like to choose. And I can choose multiple now in this window if I, if I wanted to. However, I just want chin fat. And as soon as I select that, I now have four selections, my keyframe becomes activated. So I'll set a key. And this is our, again, default pose at the zero rotation. I'll select on the jaw, rotate it in the position I'd like to activate. I'll select on the blend shape. And by opening up the blend window, I'll now turn the chin fat to 100%. And I'll set a keyframe. So now what we have is as this head is rotating, the bulging of the chin fat is bulging more. Because we have a slight skinning weighting in here, it's not showing us clearly how that change is taking place. However, the final presentation I'll be showing you of the character facial rig, you'll see clearly how well it works. The nice part about this is that now that it's set up, and we have this turned 100%, we physically go into that blend shape and be additional modifications if necessary. So I achieve the, the right amount of bulge within the fat. I can select my vertices of that particular shape and begin to alter and see that really fine tune and customize the form of your character by sculpting very easily. And you can use a sculpting tool to almost literally paint on the detail as you would normally with a ZBrush. Or so that concludes this lesson of the basics of facial blend shapes.